So each of our speakers will have about 20 minutes for their presentations. Um, I'm gonna encourage you to submit your questions for the panelists to the Q&A that, uh, that's at the bottom of your screen as we go along. Um, if you wish to communicate among the audience, you can use the chat function um, also at the bottom of your screen. And we'll answer as many of your questions as we can during the Q&A session after all of the speakers have presented. And so let's get right to it. Dr. Ahmad Omran is a cardiologist working with the perioperative echo group at TGH. It's not an exaggeration to say that he is beloved by our fellows, our anesthesia echocardiographers and our surgeons for his knowledge and his ability to uh, share that knowledge with all of us. Ahmed's a staff uh, cardiologist at the Toronto General Hospital. Uh, he completed his fellowship in echocardiography in, at the Toronto General Hospital in 1996 and subsequently collaborated with Dr. Tyrone David in developing intraoperative imaging techniques that support the development of novel techniques for aortic and mitral valve repair. Um, he's the author of landmark papers on TE assessment of the mitral valve anatomy and the suitability for mitral valve repair. He's published more than 35 papers on the role of TE in valve repair and contributed five chapters in, or chapters in five echocardiography textbooks, uh, including the role of 3D TE in the cardiac operating room. And he's currently working as a staff cardiologist supporting the perioperative echo group at Toronto General. Um, he's highly regarded as a teacher in echocardiography and runs the quality assurance program for us at, T at TGH. Um, the title of Dr. Amran's presentation is Echocardiographic TE Assessment Using 2D, 3D TE, and pr a Practical Assessment of, uh, of TR. Ahmed? Okay. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Ahmed Omran. I am a staff cardiologist in the Department of Anesthesia and Pain Management in Toronto General Hospital. And I'm working with the intraoperative T team in the cardiac OR to help the team to do the T during the cardiac surgery. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Professor Vegas and Professor Moreno for inviting me for this symposium and giving me this chance to talk about the tricuspid valve. I have no disclosure. The objectives of this talk is identify important views for imaging the tricuspid valve, recognize the additive value of 3D TE in assessing the TV, and review the assessment of TR. The tricuspid valve used to be called forgotten valve uh, and pulmonic valve at the same time used to be called unnecessary valve. That was the reason that uh, in old time during the uh, correction of tetralogy of follow, they were doing valvotomy for pulmonic valve and they didn't care about the PI. Now we know that PI is a, a big problem. At same for tricuspid valve, we didn't know the, the importance of a tricuspid regurgitation in the survival of the patient. Even in this uh, survey of Euroheart survey that was published uh, in uh, 2012, uh, again, they talked about AS, AR, MR, and MS, and nothing about tricuspid valve. About 60% of young adults have mild physiologic uh, TR and moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation affects between five to eight in every 1,000 people in the US, about 1.6 million uh, people in US. Uh, this is a very nice paper from Rebecca Han uh, from the uh, University of Columbia uh, about anatomy and physiology of tricuspid valve and a very editorial, very nice editorial by Judy Hang from Mass General that the forgotten valve finally gets some respect. This is a comparison between 
anatomy of mitral valve and anatomy of tricuspid valve. As you can see, the mitral valve is thicker. The corridor number mitral is less than tricuspid valve. There's a continuity between aortic valve and the mitral valve, but there's no continuity between pulmonic valve and tricuspid valve. And of course, tricuspid valve most of the time has a three leaflet, mitral is two leaflet. And in the mitral, uh, all part of the two leaflet goes to both papillary muscle. But in tricuspid valve, uh, each leaflet is attached to its own papillary muscle. And as I said, the thickness of the mitral valve is 3 to 4 millimeter, and thickness of the tricuspid valve is 1.5 to 2 millimeter. That paper thin leaflet in the tricuspid valve makes the imaging much, much more difficult. Uh, that is the surgical view of the right atrium and the tricuspid valve. As you see, the anterior tricuspid leaflet is adjacent to the a right uh, coronary cusp of aorta, aortic valve. The septal is adjacent to the non-coronary cusp of aortic valve and to the septum and coronary sinus. And posterior leaflet is adjacent to the IVC. Coronary sinus uh, drains somewhere the commissure, beside the commissure between septal and the posterior uh, leaflet. And this is a triangle of the Koch. In terms of ideology, ideology of TR, 90% uh, of TR are secondary to the left side valve, and 10% are primary. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the secondary TR because there is a, a second talk after me, uh, and it is talking about that. But, uh, and in terms of the primary TR, I might show you some of the cases during my talk. How to image the tricuspid valve by 2D and 3D TE? Uh, we have to always keep in mind uh, this diagram. This is a, a specimen picture uh, showing the mitral valve, tricuspid valve, and aortic valve that is wedged between these two valves. And so these are the base of the heart is showing from posterior to the anterior. As you see, this is the septal leaflet beside the internal septum and non coronary cusp. This is the anterior leaflet beside the right coronary cusp of the aorta. And the posterior leaflet is beside the IVC. This is how the tricuspid valve will dilate. The dilatation of the tricuspid valve in secondary TR is from the commissure between anteroseptal to the commissure anteroposterior, this uh, direction. But this is not the direction that we measure the tricuspid annulus in T four chamber view. Uh, this measurement was done first by Dreyfus a cardiac surgeon from uh, UK and Monte Carlo. If you want to measure the same way that the surgeon measured, we should measure in about 60 degree the tricuspid annulus. But the one that we are measuring at the zero degree is actually the dimension of anterior and septal. As there are some limitation in the imaging of 2D and 3D T for tricuspid valve. Uh, imaging of TV by 2D T can be challenging as well because of their thin structure and positioning of the TV in far field and uh, oblique in relation to the T probe. And low spatial and temporal resolution of 3D T are the additional limitation for imaging of the T TV by 3D. This is two guidelines. One uh, guideline of American Society ECO in 2013 uh, and Society of Cardiac Anesthesia, how we do the T, and this is the recent guidelines, is a joint guideline again between American Society, Society of Cardiac Anesthesia, and STS, and this is a guideline mainly decision making in the OR. So there are some views that 
is TE views from the TE guideline. And I want to show you uh, how it looks like in the specimen. So in this view, that's a five chamber view. We don't see the tricuspid valve very well because we are cutting at this blue line, dashed line. So we see the aorta, we see the mitral, you might see a little bit of the tricuspid. Okay, tricuspid is a little bit lower compared to the mitral valve. <coughs> but if you do a four chamber view, we see the septal leaflet and we see the anterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So that is this uh, blue line. And uh, when we do view number 11 and view number 12, that is the mid esophageal RV inflow outflow view and mid esophageal modified by cable TV, you can see the TV this way. So the septal leaflet and anterior leaflet are together here beside the aorta, but the other leaflet will be the posterior leaflet. That is this blue line that is cutting during this view. So this is view number 11. And in view number 12, again, we are showing the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet. Uh, in view number 19 of TE guideline, transgastric RV basal view, and number 20, a transgastric RV inflow outflow view. Again, we see the tricuspid valve here. In the number 19, we see the septal leaflet, posterior leaflet, and anterior leaflet. And in number 20, we can see the anterior and posterior. And in number 23 view, again, transgastic RV inflow view, uh, anterior leaflet is below the picture, and posterior leaflet is at the top. This is a very good view, again, to see the a degree of the TR and even align it by Doppler and measure the RVSP. Uh, what about 3D? Has any role? It will add anything to the 2D T assessment of the uh, tricuspid valve. This is a guideline of 3D. It was published in 2012, and uh, all big names in 3D are there Roberto Lang, Luigi Bodano. And from our center, uh, Windy is there. Uh, in this guideline, they recommended imaging, imaging the TV mainly by uh, transthoracic echo because it's easier to get the uh, tricuspid valve. And the view that uh, they showed, we always show the valve. Uh, in a way that septum, interitral septum, is below the picture. So CDT, uh, at least in our center, when I was uh, before here, I was in Saudi Arabia. This is the first view that I could get it in 2010, three valve or four valve together. It was very exciting to get this four valve together. And I always show it because it's very similar to the anatomy specimen. So this valve, mitral is a rheumatic, uh, tricuspid valve is second as well. So that's the reason that it can be shown better. Again, posterior leaflet, anterior leaflet, and the septal leaflet. And the aortic valve is wedged between tricuspid valve and the mitral valve. So how I get the 3D of a tricuspid valve by T, also in the guideline says it's better to do it at zero to 30 degree. But uh, the way that I get it, I believe that every valve should be taken in a perpendicular to the valve. And we are in the war always, we know that the view that is perpendicular to the TV is 120 or 130 degree. So this is a tricuspid valve my first view, zoom mode. And this will be the 3D zoom that I can get by that uh, view. So IVC is here, aorta is here. I will rotate this picture. And when we rotate it, 
you will have uh, this picture. Uh, also, as you see, this tricuspid valve here is second, so that's the reason that we have a better picture. So there are a couple of landmark. Uh, aorta is here below the picture, and mitral valve is here. So this is the posterior leaflet, this is the septal leaflet, and this is the anterior leaflet beside the RA appendage. This is a surgical view of the tricuspid valve. Again, we have to be careful about the landmark. As I said, anterior leaflet, the landmark is RA appendage and part of the aorta maybe. Uh, septal leaflet, the landmark is intertal septum and posterior leaflet, the landmark is IVC. So again, this is the surgical view, septal leaflet, posterior leaflet, and anterior leaflet. Surgeon is standing here, so posterior leaflet is beside the right hand of the surgeon. This is one of the patients that had TR because of the dilatation of the tricuspid valve, so it's a secondary TR. And again, you can see by 3D, we showed that there's a large gap at the middle, and that's a cause for TR. That's a gap. And, and when we did the repair by a ring, you see the gap is taken out, and, and there will be no TR. Uh, this is another case that had a trauma about six months ago. You can see a mobile mass here. This is a papillary muscle that is ruptured, and this is severe uh, TR. This is the 3D again, surgical view, shows the anterior papillary muscle, so the anterior leaflet became flail, and here you can by this movement. Uh, what about TR assessment by echo? Again, uh, 2D and 3D. Uh, this is one of the regurgitant jet, doesn't matter, this is a mitral, but tricuspid is the same. In every regurgitant jet, you should see the three components of the regurgitant jet. That's a flow convergence, vena contractor, and jet area. So if you don't have, or we don't see the flow convergence very well, we might overestimate the size of the vena contractor. So that's a very important uh, tricks that we should be aware of that. So that's how we measure the flow convergence. You have to be careful that because the TR velocity is lower than mitral velocity, you have to bring the Nyquist limit down, lower than the mitral one. So the mitral one, we, we bring the Nyquist down, limit down to 40 centimeters per second, uh, but here we have to bring it like a 20 centimeter per second. So this is the vena contractor, how we measure it. This is a trans thoracic view. And in 3D, we can measure the uh, vena contractor by 3D as well. Uh, like mitral valve, we can use the pizza in a tricuspid valve to quantitate the degree of the TR. But again, we have to bring the Nyquist limit down to about 20 centimeter per second. This is one of the example of the patient with rheumatic mitral valve, this is transthoracic and, and rheumatic tricuspid valve. You see the large gap between the leaflets. That's a severe TR, but you don't see the flow convergence. So we might underestimate, overestimate the size of the when a contractor, if we don't see that fellow convergence. And that's a Doppler. You see the Doppler has an early peaking, it's a triangular shape, and the velocity is not very high because the pressure difference between RV and RA is not very high, it's not very big when we have a severe TR. This is the uh, hepatic vein and IVC, you see IVC is dilated, and there's a flow reversal in hepatic vein. 
And this is a T. You see the translation was much, much better to show the tricuspid valve in this patient. So T, we don't see the leaflet very well. And, and this is severe TR. This is the TR jet. Uh, this is another case of Epstein. You can see the sail-like anterior leaflet. And you can see the severe TR. So this is a cone repair. It was done in our center by Dr. Honjo. And you see the valve, he made it like a cone. This is the opening of the cone to the RV. So this is the TV inflow. And this is CD exactly, is a, like a cone. And when I put the flow, flow from RA comes to the inside the cone and goes out from the mouth of the cone. So in summary, echocardiography plays a major role in assessment of tricuspid valve and differentiating between primary and secondary TR. Interoperative T evaluation of TV should focus on anatomy and function, as well as physiologic effects on surrounding structures. CDDT has an additive value in defining morphology of the valve and mechanism of TR. However, imaging by CDDT can be challenging as well because of paper thin structure of the leaflets and positioning of the TV in the far field of the probe. So thank you very much for listening and hopefully we can answer to some questions. That's really wonderful, Ahmed. Thank you so much. Um, and, and certainly I'll encourage people if they have some questions to go ahead and put them into the uh, Q and A, um, and we'll get to them at the end of the uh, of our all of our presentations.